All right, guys, welcome back to video number eight. Like I promised, I'm doing these more frequently now. So it is the next day and we are making another video. So um, today I want to go over the touch listeners and your Spanish verb of the day is tocar, which means to touch or to play as in an instrument. So now that you know that, you are set to go with programming this touch listeners. One quick thing I want to mention before we start is I am starting to use brackets now and I realize it looks exactly the same and that's because it basically is exactly the same as edge code but this is actually definitely free to get so go to brackets.io and it's basically the same exact thing. I, I don't I'm not sure what the backstory is on that or anything but in any case, go download it. It's free. It's cool. And um, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to be doing here is we're going to jump down to our universe right here. And we are going to be adding four new properties to this universe function or object. So the first one we're going to add is we want to add a touch chord property because touch chord is obviously we want to know where our finger is and we want all of our other code to know where our finger is throughout our game. So the touch chord initialized to null because there is no finger on the screen as far as we know when the game starts. So the next function is our touch start. And like I said, this is a function and we will keep that empty until we define our other two functions, which we have our touch move. And finally, our touch end. And now, for those of you who do development for the web, you know about, you know, mouse over mouse, you know, not mouse over, but like click uh, mouse move and then like release or I forget which variations there are but anyways in this case we have touch start touch move and touch end for you know devices with touch capabilities and that's basically the same idea so in this case um, we are creating these functions that we'll call, you know, when the finger touches the screen, when you move around the screen, and when you let go of the screen. And now what I want to cover in this video is we're not going to cover like how to move the systems around. What I want to do first is build something for us that will just make it so that the screen only recognizes our first finger that touches the screen. You know, because this game, or at least our moving around our universe, isn't it's, isn't meant to support more than one finger on the screen. And if you don't add this little bit of code, then, you know, if you put one finger on the screen and you're moving around, it's fine. But then as soon as you put two fingers down and you're moving them around, or two fingers and moving them around uh, simultaneously, you're going to see a lot of glitches and weird stuff going on. And what we want to do is just completely get rid of all that together and just respond to the code from our first finger and nothing else. And then that doesn't mean that later on you couldn't add things like double taps and like, you know, pinch to zoom or, you know, just multi-touch capabilities. We can do that stuff later. But for this, for the universe, we only want it to respond to one finger at a time. So what we're going to do is firstly, we're going to add an e.preventDefault. And the main reason I use this is because it, it prevents any default scrolling. So just in case we had some stuff right now, we've pretty much gotten rid of all of our scrolling stuff, but just in case something happens, um, it also does a couple, a few other things. Um, I'm not really sure the whole list, but um, you know, that information's available on the web if you want to know more about it. Um, the only thing or what we do next now is we're going to define a variable and I'm just going to call it touch and in this case the touch will actually be sent to and I apologize I forgot to add my event to each of these because each of these functions takes a parameter and it's not a parameter that you pass in you know, when you call the function, it's a parameter that gets passed in automatically. So every touch listener will have an event that gets passed in 
that gives it specific information. In this case, one of the properties passed in is touches, and touches is what we're accessing. So E dot touches is an array, and it's the array of fingers, basically. And what we're doing is we're saying, okay, E dot touches zero, meaning the only the first finger is what that variable we be set to. And then what we're going to say is we're going to make a quick little if statement here. Make sure that I'm getting all of this right. I always forget this stuff. Um, so then we're going to make a quick little if statement here, and we're just going to check to make sure that if e dot touches dot length when this function is called equals one. So that's going to verify, and then of course we put our code in here. That's going to verify that we only call that code on the first touch. So you touch the screen once, you know that that touch length must be only one because there's only one finger on the screen. If you touch it again with a second finger, then nothing's going to happen. It's going to call that and say, oh, well, you know, e.touches equals two, so we're not going to run any of that code in here. So now in here, what we want to do is we want to say, okay, universe dot touch chord, and we want to set this equal to a new object because now we have a finger, now we can change it from null to an actual object, a defined object. And this object is going to have an X property, and that X property will be set equal to, in this case, our um, touch, because our touch, remember, was defined to the first finger. So our touch, and then each of those, each of those um, objects holds a page X, a page Y, and an identifier. So in this case, we want to set the X of this touch chord to the touch dot page X, the Y to the touch dot page Y, and we want to just set an ID for that property or that um, that object as well. So, and that will be set to the touch dot identifier. I can spell it. Okay. So now that you have that defined, I know that this may seem a little confusing if you're not used to this kind of thing. Um, more research can be done online than I could really explain about how this stuff works. I mean, you can look up all the E properties that come out of, you know, the touch listeners. Um, there's definitely a lot of information on the, online. I mean, that's where I learned about all of it. So it's definitely, there are definitely some helpful resources out there. But anyways, we will jump right into the touch move here and we will say e dot prevent default as well here. And then what we will do is this, this is a little bit different here because now if there are multiple touches and they're all moving around the screen, we need to make sure that we're running through a loop of all those touches because we want to call, we, we're calling all of them every time each finger is moving but we only want to run code on the first on the first finger that touched the screen. So we don't want to have any weird errors with moving around multiple fingers at the same time because you know our system our solar system just doesn't work that way. We don't have the multi-touch stuff and it's going to get weird if we do that. So in this case what we're going to do is we're actually running through a for loop. And so in this case we'll just say run through an i for loop and we'll say while it's less, of course, than the touches dot length. So essentially this will run through, this is going to run through all of our fingers on the screen. And then what we're going to do is quickly make an if statement in here that just checks to see if the E dot touches at the index I, so whatever current finger we're on, we need to make sure that that finger's identifier equals the universe dot touch chord dot ID that we set when we first touch the screen. So now we touch the screen, it sets our coordinate stuff and our ID, it goes down to the move, so as soon as you move, it makes sure it runs through a loop of all the fingers on the screen and makes sure that the ID of the finger that you're touching 
or the ID of the finger that's on the screen equals whatever finger it is in the loop. And that will just verify that although this loop is being could be being run a bunch of times with all your fingers on the screen, it will only call the code once for the first finger that you touched with. So there our, co our code goes right in there now. And our touch, our touch end function is a little bit different because of the fact that e.touches won't work for this because once you've released your finger, your finger's not on the screen anymore, so it will it won't register anything for touch for touches because there's no touch on the screen at that time. So what what we need to do here instead is run through a for loop of the changed touches, which is another property that um, is provided by our e event property that we passed in. So we run through the e dot changed touches dot length. And now inside of this loop, it basically what we're going to do is what we just did is we are just going to check to make sure that that e dot changed touches i dot identifier equals our universe dot touch cord dot id. And then of course we can put our code right in the middle there. And then that will work now. And that's going to take care of everything that we need. So now whenever you touch with one finger, it'll run the code fine. If we touch with a second finger, you can still do whatever you want with the first finger, but this finger doesn't do anything. So you could touch with as many fingers as you wanted, but only the first finger will run any code at all. And there will be no weird glitches with you know multi-touch and stuff like that. So it is going to work brilliantly for you. And now in the next video, we can actually start working on updating our touch coordinate and start getting our systems moving around based on where we move. So it is going to be super cool. Make sure you stick around for that. And you know, if you guys are enjoying the series so far, subscribe down below, give this video a thumbs up and check out my next videos. I will see you guys later. Peace.